All right, looks like everything's good to go so far. So I'm just gonna start the video. Hey guys, what's up on the U-Box? This is Top App Productions 115, coming at you with another video. This time I'm doing a little bit of an experiment of sorts. I don't know if this is gonna work out well. I'm gonna try to do this, um, this whole entire video without pausing, without editing, because, well, I'm trying to make sure that I can get this video out today, and also I don't really have the means to edit the video, so if I do have to edit it, well, it won't be coming up any time in the year 2016. So yeah, let's hope that I don't have to edit this. Anyway, um, as you can see, I am uh, I'm showing you the black MacBook that I work with currently for video editing, but why is that? Well, it's because of the fact that I, uh, yeah. There is your hint, right there. I've done something. And any of you guys from iFixit, or anyone who's torn down a computer before, knows exactly what that means. I uh, kind of went into my MacBook, and I'm currently attempting a logic board replacement procedure. Now, here is the old logic board. Is my hand in front of the camera by chance? Almost was. Yeah, my bad. I'm just gonna move this out the way here. And then from there, I'm just gonna shift the camera so I can move the logic board. So here is the bottom of the old logic board. It's inside a uh, protective bag right now. The logic board itself will show up in the uh, top left-hand corner of the screen. In the future, when I do videos like this, if you want the camera view to be bigger, simply say so in the comments, and I'll make it bigger for the next video. Alright, so that's the bottom view. And here is the top view. I have to unwrap the bag a little bit. The bag kind of obscures it. Trying to keep it in the bag while showing it to you to protect it in case I have to use it. I'm currently doing this because I want to upgrade to El Capitan and I can't quite get Mac, po Mac Post Factor working right now. Since I can't get Mac Post Factor working, I'm attempting a hardware hack instead. This video is being done in HD to the best of my ability. I can't guarantee that it will come out perfectly but I am trying to make sure it comes out nicely. Should be going at 30 frames per second, so if it doesn't look like 30 frames per second, I'll see what I can do to improve the resolution and quality of the video and the overall stability of the recording. As you can see, I haven't even left the Screen Recorder app yet because I don't really need to. So that's the old logic board right there. I had two gigs of RAM in those slots, one gig of DDR2 RAM in each slot, just one gig modules. Didn't quite get more RAM. The reason why I didn't get more RAM is because of the fact that RAM would have cost me around $25 to $30 at the least to uh, upgrade it or to like keep the same amount. In addition to that, it was also suggested that I possibly upgrade to a solid state, but solid state would have cost a lot more as well. Solid state usually costs around $50 to $100 bucks to replace, and my MacBook currently has 256 gigs of hard drive space in it, so trying to replace that with a solid state would have cost a pretty penny. Around $50 from what I've seen on eBay, maybe $25 if I waited for a deal, but at the same time, I got the new logic board for around $70 to $80 off of eBay, and it came with everything but the heatsink. So I thought it would be better to do that because, hey, it's more cost effective. However, when I tried to open the MacBook, guess what happened? If you guys were if you guys were paying attention when I flew by these bags here, you saw like this black dot sitting there. Guess what that is? For any of you who have opened a MacBook before, you'll know exactly what. Wait, it's not there. Wait, there it is. I like lost track of it. You know what that is, unfortunately. Yeah, it's that coin thing that's used to open the battery compartment, it used to pop the battery out. I tried to twist it and it wouldn't activate the uh, latch mechanism. It wouldn't push out the battery. And after a while, it just popped off. So I ended up going in there by hand and actually activating that mechanism. How I did that was when the MacBook was turned over, I had to, uh, yeah, I had to grab 
the, the metal rotating mechanism that sits underneath of this thing because this thing's attached to that rotating metal mechanism by two plastic pins. They're attached to the back of this. I'll go and just flip it over right now so you can see what I mean. Yeah, there we go. There are two pin-like structures on this item that actually are a glued in adhesive attached, glued to a uh, metal rotating mechanism on the bottom of the MacBook. Both of those pegs gave out, so I'm not able to use that plastic mechanism anymore. So what will have to happen is every time I go in there, I actually have to grab the metal thing by hand and actually twist it. When I was originally trying to open it, when I couldn't figure it out, the mechanism, as in the rotating mechanism that I was supposed to push the battery out, kept on shifting over to the side. So I actually had to hold it in place and rotate it by hand, which is a pain in the butt. And I finally got to push out the battery. So yeah, the battery, the battery remo removal mechanism for my MacBook is kind of uh, messed up right now. But as you saw in my uh, first few flybys, the battery is out. So I did manage to get it out. It's just I'm going to have to find a way to replace this or to uh, repair slash, I know, reattach it. It's going to be pretty hard to reattach because I don't exactly know how. And also, this thing's damaged now. But nonetheless, that's not really a problem. I already know how to uh, remove the battery. And I should not really need to, you know, replace the battery. Because last time I checked the battery, it was good. I tried to do a video on this um, yesterday when I was doing the actual teardown and logic board placement, but um, kept on running out of space. And also, it was just a nightmare trying to open this MacBook initially. This is my first time attempting to do a uh, teardown. So I'll go on and uh, show you that the battery should be good. Yeah, it's blinking green. I'll show you what I mean. One, two, where is that? So that's my hand. Where is? There it is. It's right there. The camera is all the way to the right here, which doesn't make it easy. As you can see, it it blinked green twice. Um. And there is the button right there, so I'll press it again. Yeah, it holds a charge. It works. The thing is, the uh, logic board has two issues. A it did not recognize the battery when it was fully charged. Sometimes it just wouldn't recognize it at all and would require the wall outlet, even though the battery's in there. And B, something that something that happened more recently, if you've been following me recently on the uh, Stack Exchange websites, the headphone jack in this MacBook actually gave out as well. So it was stuck, and the only reason why I wasn't forced to stop using it completely for the um, audio is because of the fact that I had installed Voodoo HDA. Voodoo HDA saved my audio temporarily, allowing me to use the MacBook just a while longer before I finally decided to replace the logic board because, hey, first of all, I had to use Mac Post Factor just to get 10.10.5, and B, I'd rather get the latest OS if I can. However, that's turning out to be a little bit of a difficulty because, yeah, I'm chipping plastic just to get the job done doesn't look too good when your MacBook starts letting off stuff like this. So, um, yeah. It's not exactly going as planned, but I am getting further than I thought. Before I go any further, I uh, originally attempted to use some screwdrivers from an eyeglass repair kit, but that doesn't work too well after a while because some of the screws were just too small for even that somehow. And that was... Um, kind of weird because the eyeglass repair kit had really small precision screwdrivers. So if precision screwdrivers couldn't get in there, well, what could possibly get in there and allow for me to remove the screws? Well, I had to uh, go digging around down in my basement for a bit, and I found these really, really pointy, sharp, edged screwdriver heads. My dad happened to have, yeah, my dad happened to have some of these, uh, adapters, I guess, sitting around. I don't know if they're called adapters, but screwdriver heads. And uh, they were actually small and uh, sharp enough, pointy enough for me to actually use on the screws inside the MacBook. And as you can see, this is the one that's currently equipped with. 
This is the one that I used all day yesterday while poking and prodding inside of that monster over there. So, yeah. Lots of fun, right? I don't know if I can get a good close-up, but I'll try. If this thing decides to focus. Um, it looks as though it's trying to focus on the background more, so I'm just going to shift this over. Now it's trying to focus on the wood on the table, I think. You know, it's probably not going to because I'm shaking around a lot, but either way, here's another tool that I used. I was using this to help with removing certain parts that had to be pulled out, kind of like a miniature prying tool or crowbar, like a guitar pick. I was using that because of the fact that I don't have a good guitar pick for this one. All the guitar picks I have are like somewhat soft and not really good at, you know, prying things apart. So what I did instead was simply use this, which has like a wedge tool. And I had to be really careful because if I, you know, applied a little too much force with this metal wedge tool, I would have ripped the thing apart. Thank goodness I don't believe I did any damage though while poking and prodding in there, removing connections and stuff. Nonetheless, the hardest part should be behind me. Now, on the iFixit page, they uh, mentioned that I could actually swap out the logic board for this one. This is a black MacBook 4,1, supposedly from early or late 2008. However, when I poked and prodded inside of there, guess what type of heatsink I found? I found this, which is supposedly from a, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, but Perin. P-E-R-Y-N or something like that, or Santa Rosa late 2008-2009 model revision or something like that. So in this case, it looks as though my MacBook may have already been modified or might be just a revision of the 2008 model. In other words, I don't think that mine was truly a 2008 model. I think mine may have actually been a 2009 revision of the 2008 model because of the way this heatsink is, and also due to the specs that it originally came with. It didn't quite match the original 2008 revision for the Coor 2 Duo, and as such, I am led to believe that this is slightly different from what I thought it was originally. Nonetheless, though, it's similar enough where I can do the job, and what I did was I replaced this old logic board, that which you already saw, with this one. Now I'm gonna have to lift the keyboard and remove the connector. So um, I'm gonna have to set that on the camera here. I'll move these out the way. Um, I forgot to pull out the stand, hang on. There we go. So I'm just gonna go in and lift the keyboard here. I left it open. And I'm gonna remove the keyboard connector nice and carefully. If I can just get my hand underneath there gonna be a little bit difficult and there okay so that's removed and here is what it looks like on the inside as of now I'm just gonna pull this forward I've already replaced as many screws as I can I've also uh, left out some things so you can see better as you can see, everything's pretty much in place as of now, including the hard drive. The only thing that can't be connected though, due to the type of logic board I've replaced it with, is this super drive right here. This super drive has an incompatible connector. And if I can just get my hand in frame right there, this is its connector for the original. And the connector for the super drive that is meant for this model is right here where my index finger is. This is a smaller, later connector. It is meant for an 8x super drive, which possibly has Bluetooth, not Bluetooth, Blu-ray capabilities from what I've seen online. I'm just gonna rotate this so you can see the uh, identification so you can get what I mean. This is a different drive. This one 
is a DVD read-write drive as well. Super Multi DVD Rewriter Model GSAS10N, manufactured July 2008. So yeah, the one that I'm looking for has to be compatible with a MacBook 5,2 logic board. And since the connector is different, I'm going to have to buy a new drive and also a new connector. Which means that this drive is now not um, really capable of being used by me since I don't have another MacBook that uses that. So what I'm going to end up doing is obviously removing this drive since I can't use it anymore. And this will be one of the other items I'll sell on eBay. So without further ado, I'll go in and give you just a little bit of a removal thing here. That's one screw. Let's see if I can't remove the other screw. This one right here has to be removed as well. I just have to move this out the way first. Yeah. As you can see, just lots of stuff to move around at this point. Also, if you see anything that looks like it has been connected properly, just let me know. I'm hoping to uh, link this to my iFixit profile soon so that you guys can see it everywhere. So that you can actually follow me in my efforts to, uh, you know, revamp this MacBook. This is going to be a pain. <sighs> Removing all these braces and stuff just to get to the drive. If it looks like I'm removing anything that's not required to be moved, feel free to say so in the comments. I'm not going to do any damage, though. Yeah, this is obviously the display thing. But I'm only removing this display holder because of the fact that I need more clearance and I'm too much of a noob. So therefore, I'd feel more comfortable if I moved a few things out the way. I've already seen other teardowns. I already know what this is. It's just that I don't want to screw up anything by... Uh, bending anything. So, yeah. Now that I've done that, yeah, what's next? Something along here, I believe. Yeah, this has to come up as well. So, yeah, lots of uh, parts replacement. And once again, I mean, this is not going to be a fast project. Because in the end, once I get all the parts in there, I also have to make sure that this thing turns on. Kind of a 50-50 shot in my case, because, hey, I bought this MacBook originally off of eBay just over a year ago, and I don't know what type of issues it had. So, yeah, I bought someone else's problems. Great! <laughs> but anyway... There. So pretty much pry that out of the way. Time to remove my uh, Bluetooth antennae. Last time I checked, the Bluetooth antenna... Is that glued on there? It feels like it is. Obviously I didn't remove everything that's supposed to. Nonetheless, this drive is going to be removed because I can't use it anymore. So without further ado, I'm just going to go into halt the process right here and talk about things that are more important. First of all, I need a newer version of this drive that is compatible with a MacBook 5, 2 logic board. So if you happen to know someone who has one that's for sale, preferably under $40, around 30 to 25 dollars that'd be nice and also i need a new heatsink for the intel core 2 duo 2.13 gigahertz version 
it needs to be in the uh, proper shape for the 2009 white unibody MacBook. The white unibody MacBook is, um, it's shaped like this MacBook 4 comma 1, only it's a slightly different revision with a NVIDIA GPU. Please keep in mind, it's not the same as the MacBook with the rubber bottom on it. The white MacBook with a completely rubber bottom is a different one, and uh, that is not what I'm looking for. If it happens to have the same heat sink, however, that's nice, but I need a heat sink that is compatible specifically with this setup for the MacBook 5 comma 2. It needs to be able to cover both of these and also needs to be able to connect with this fan. Of course, if you have a heat sink fan combination for that same price, I'll buy that as well. But preferably, I'm just looking for that heat sink. Um, besides that, I am also currently attempting to, uh, yeah, I'm also looking at possibly replacing the trackpad, but for now, that's really just a sight thing. I'm not really thinking about it right now. I'm more so just considering it because that's not really necessary. And I'm quite happy with the trackpad I currently have on this thing. So the main two things I'm looking at right now are simply the heatsink and the DVD super drive. The DVD super drive removal process is a lot more involved than what you just saw. So I'm not really even going to try to do that in camera because I'm holding the camera and that would be a pretty dumb idea for me to attempt because I still have to remove other things as well. Like I'd be stupid enough to actually go in and try to mess with all of this. So um, yeah, this MacBook is definitely not going to be in use for a bit. And as such, you won't be seeing many video editing attempts, which means that you'll be seeing a lot more of my old style videos where I just went on and recorded it once and then uploaded it, similar to how I do my live streams. Sorry if that takes down the quality of the videos, that's just because I'm trying to make sure that I get content out to you guys, even though I have no access to my regular video editor. My current video editing software is VideoPad, the uh, free edition for Mac. I have been using that on my uh, MacBook with OS X 10.10.5. If you're wondering how I did that, as I said before, it was with Mac Post Factor. Unfortunately, as I said before, can't use El Capitan with it, so that's why I'm doing this hardware swap. So if you have anything to say about it, leave a comment below, and uh, I'll see you soon. This video will also be going to uh, iFixit. I'll be posting it on iFixit on my uh, profile, just to see if anyone has any uh, comments on it. And uh, I'm just going to do one more uh, look at this. To let you guys see what I've done so far, to see if you guys think that I uh, connected anything incorrectly, to see if I left out anything. And of course, let me go in and shift over here a little bit as well. Alright guys, my video is just about done. So without further ado, this is Top Hat Productions 115 saying have a good day, have a good holiday break, Christmas, Kwanzaa, whatever you celebrate. And uh, I'm sorry that this is coming out after Christmas. However, I uh, didn't quite have the opportunity to record videos because I was busy with my family. And that's quite important in my opinion. So uh, guys, you keep it cool for any returning viewers. I'll see you in the next video, and for any new viewers, welcome to the galaxy, and I hope to see you again. Please leave a like or subscribe if you want to, and uh, we also have multiple donation channels, as in channels, as in pages to be exact. By channels I mean pages, you can donate to me via PayPal, or you can do it via Bitcoin, whenever you want to, and it'll help to actually uh, do more projects like this because I have to purchase hardware and new equipment every so often. And uh, besides that, if you want to help out, you can also purchase things via eBay as well. So you can make a donation or you can purchase things off the eBay store. I'll leave a link to all of that in the description. You guys keep it cool, and I will see you later, preferably in the year 2017. So for now, I'm just going to go on and say it.
here. Happy New Year's, and I'll see you on the other side. And to all of you, welcome to the galaxy. This is TXP Network, signing out.